In the heart of the Gonquin forest, the tide of fall foliage sweeps through the countryside, bringing with it a spectacular display of autumn colors. Robust reds, ah, uh, the orchestral oranges, and the Creole yellows mixed to provide onlookers with a privileged glimpse at the resonance of Mother Nature's palette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you have to clean them up. You know, each year we blow and rake and bag tons of leaves. And after all that work, have you ever stopped to wonder why? I mean, why do the leaves change color and fall off the trees? Well, it all comes down to this. You see, the fog on the lens is water. We humans expel water vapor every time we exhale. A tree does a similar thing. The average deciduous tree expels up to 900 liters of water per day in the form of water vapor. It's part of the tree's natural biological cycle. The water evaporates from the large surface area of the leaves and is continually replaced with water taken up by the roots. But in cold, dry weather, a tree's roots can't draw enough water from the soil to compensate for the water loss. Without water, well, a tree can't survive. So to deal with this problem, deciduous trees make their leaves drop, which shuts down most of their normal biological function. What water and food they do have is stored deep in the trunk, the branches, and in the roots. They essentially go dormant for the winter. The big leaf drop is triggered by the shorter, cooler days of autumn. So deciduous trees drop their leaves to retain water, but that doesn't explain those colors. What the? Ah, yes, the colors of autumn, when lovers are swept away like leaves in the wind during the passionate pageant of fall. All right, all right, enough with the romance. Now, contrary to what you might think, the tree does not manufacture these spectacular colors. They were always there. Allow me to explain, you see. Unlike us, a tree cannot go to the supermarket, go to the drive-thru, or pick up the phone and order a pizza. It has to make its food, and that's where the leaves come in. Through a process known as photosynthesis, a leaf is able to take water from the soil and carbon dioxide from the surrounding air and convert them into food. But to make this conversion work, the leaf needs an all-important third ingredient sunlight. To harness the sunlight, the leaf relies on a green pigment called chlorophyll, the stuff that makes plants, well, green. Chlorophyll has the ability to change sunlight into energy, kind of like a solar cell. Leaves. So what does chlorophyll have to do with the leaves changing color? Well, when a deciduous tree gets ready to drop its leaves, a few things happen. First, a layer of cork-like material forms between the base of the leaf stem and the branch. This plug cuts the leaf off from the rest of the tree. No food reaches the leaf, and at the same time, the sugar produced through photosynthesis can't reach the rest of the tree. So the sugar builds up in the leaf, and the chlorophyll breaks down and begins to fade. Hiding behind the chlorophyll green are other pigments, Take it away. Ah, yes, the other pigments. The orange and red carotenoids, the pigments that make carrots orange and radishes red, the yellow xanthophylls, and the purple and blue anthocyanin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These other pigments help absorb light of different wavelengths, so the leaf can collect more of the sun's energy. It makes photosynthesis more efficient. I didn't know that. But eventually, the curtain goes down on this big show of color and you're left to clean up the theater. Which brings up another interesting question. I mean, why do deciduous trees lose their leaves in the fall when evergreen trees, like a pine, keep their foliage year-round? Remember when I said deciduous trees drop their leaves to survive cold, dry weather? Well, evergreens do the same thing, but in a slightly different way. 
Evergreens have adapted their leaves to minimize evaporation. They're needles. The needles have a relatively small surface area compared to a deciduous leaf. This construction prevents massive moisture loss. So when water becomes scarce, instead of dumping all their leaves, evergreens need only shed some of their needles to compensate. Which is a good thing, because these leaves can be a downright pain in the grass. Hey, Mike. Mike. Nice job on the leaves. Hey, 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 you guys want to help me out a bit here? Sure. All right. Give you I'll give you a hand. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Get that. Uh, get out of my pile. What? <laughs>